Hello all and welcome to Arachnids in the News with Janos Tarantulas. Our first story is from February 1st, 2022 and the headline reads, Giant House Spiders, Are They Getting Bigger? As spiders come indoors every autumn, social media is convinced the UK's arachnids have grown in size. John Keats might have described autumn as the season of mist and mellow fruitfulness, but for many arachnophobes, it's also the season of spiders. As evenings draw in, large spiders scuttling across the floor become a common sight. They are a reliable source of the nature scare stories so beloved of the UK media, But are these spiders really getting bigger as some reports claim? There are several different species that are broadly similar and when fully grown, pretty impressive. A couple of species can reach a leg span in excess of 10 centimeters, which is more than big enough to give most people a scare. The impression that these spiders are getting bigger could have a few explanations. The first is that during the summer, these spiders are still growing and are not so conspicuous in our homes. By autumn, adult males start moving around looking for females, and so we suddenly see larger spiders much more frequently. Couple this with the fact that many people are not exactly spider fans and that house spiders may appear against pale carpets or white bathtubs, then it is easy to see how people could think they are getting bigger. It's also possible that people may be seeing different species of spider. Another possibility is that since spiders are predators, a good summer for their prey species may mean that spiders are better fed and have more chance of reaching a larger size. None of these explanations suggest that spiders are getting bigger. However, there is an intriguing piece of work from Australia that lends some weight to the idea that spiders could get larger given the right circumstances. In the study, golden orb weaving spiders living in and around Sydney were collected and measured. The researchers focused on mature adult females collected from a variety of sites ranging from city parks to bushland. They measured these spiders to assess body size and condition. They also dissected some of them to measure ovary size. What they found was that spiders in urban areas were significantly larger than those from lesser built up areas. Not only were city spiders bigger, they also had larger ovaries, meaning they could lay more eggs. It seems that two factors may have resulted in the larger urban spiders, temperature and prey availability. Buildings, concrete, tarmac, and hard materials store up heat and make urban areas warmer. The warmer temperatures of urban areas could have increased spider growth rates. Urban regions may also have more prey available for spiders, or it may be that spiders are building their webs in areas that happen to attract more prey. Street lighting is effective at attracting flying insects and larger spiders were associated with structures like lampposts and were found in central areas with higher levels of lighting. Whether other spiders are similarly affected by urbanization remains to be seen. What is clear is that the habitats we create in our cities can have profound effects on the creatures that share our homes and gardens. Usually, when one thinks of a musician, you would think of a guitar player, a saxophone player, a harmonica player, a piano player, but one would probably never think of spider webs. But our next story is from February 4th, 2022, and the headline reads, Scientists figured out how to convert spider webs into songs. We translate complex 3D data from the original web model into music using data sonification. We map the spider web data to audio parameters such as pitch, amplitude, and envelope. Paired with a visual representation, the resulting audio allows a unique and holistic immersion into the web that can describe the features of the 3D architecture, fiber, distance, lengths, connectivity, and overall porosity of the structure as a function of spatial location in the web. Using granular synthesis, we further develop a method to extract musical building blocks from the sonified web, transforming the original representation of the web data into new musical compositions. 
You can listen to an audio clip of a spider's web song at Physics World. And now for the big story you've all been waiting for. This story comes from February 7th, 2022, and the headline reads, Spider Silk Could Help Regrow Damaged Nerves. Spider silk has enormous potential in regenerative medicine thanks to being a natural fiber that is tough, stable, and biodegradable. Researchers have now produced double-sided spider silk fibers, which could provide damaged nerve or muscle cells with a platform for growth. As the researchers report, one side of the fibers is suitable for cell adhesion, while the other side could be used to attach factors or other substances. Spider silk is non-toxic, biocompatible, and attracts virtually no microbes. These properties make it an ideal candidate as a supporting medium for nerve cells to grow along. However, in spider silk's original form, this process can take a very long time and requires complicated preparative steps. With this in mind, a materials scientist from a university in Germany, along with his team, optimized the natural product in more than one way simultaneously using a biotechnological approach. His team produced spider silk using a genetically modified microorganism. This gives us advantages in terms of quality, he explains, and makes it possible to modify the proteins. The team not only modified one spider silk protein, but produced Janus spider silk fibers containing two differently optimized proteins in one material. Janus fibers get their name from the famous Roman god thanks to their two faces or sides. One side of the fibers was formed from a spider silk protein in which the team substituted a single amino acid. This reversed the net charge from negative to positive of the protein. The surface of the material then becomes more attractive to cells, he explains. The other side of the fiber was formed from a spider silk protein to which the team added the amino acid cysteine. The addition of cysteine makes it possible to employ click chemistry, a method of functionalizing materials in which the reaction partners react so easily with one another that it is as if they have been simply clicked together. The team produced a two-sided water-soluble fibrous material by using side-by-side -side electrospinning, which involves drawing out a thread from a protein solution in an electrical field. Post-treatment produced the Janus spider silk fibers as a crystalline insoluble material. The fiber was then specifically coated on one side with gold nanoparticles using click chemistry which made the spider silk electrically conductive, allowing the success of the modification to be directly measured. Janus spider silk fibers coated with gold nanoparticles could be used to stimulate the growth of muscle cells. Muscles are excited by electrical impulses, which could be produced using a gold wire made of spider silk fibers. However, other modifications could be even more promising the researchers are also investigating attachment of growth factors using click chemistry. These would not only promote cell adherence to the surface, but also targeted and quicker growth of nerve cells along a splint. Hmm, does this mean we could be getting closer to becoming spider men and spider women? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching this edition of Arachnids in the News. We'll see you next time, spiderlings.